This video explains how to add and maintain driver information. To find the driver's information, click on the Assets tab and then go to Drivers on the left-hand menu to see the list of your drivers. Fundamental to all tables is the template record, so we'll start with looking at the template record. To look at the template record, click Yes on Templates, which would show all template records. Then drill into the template record to see the details of the template. Templates are used to set defaults for some of the flags that are associated with drivers. In this case, is the seating locked? Yes or no? Can drivers cross the border? What's their overall ranking? Are they still active on payroll? The driver type? Can and the driver be selected for random drug tests. If you are unsure what some setting means, mouse over the setting and you will see documentation to help you understand what the setting means. Another great thing to add to a template is all the compliance records you would need to store about the driver. Let's say every time you added a new driver using this template, you not only wanted to see their license, you also wanted to see their physical. We would add a new compliance type of driver physical exam and we would just leave everything blank and save that. Now we have driver physical exam associated to the template record. To add a new driver, go to the drivers listing and at the top right there's a green button that says add new driver. You can either add a driver from your template record or you can highlight a record in the grid and you can say copy selected in which case it will copy all the default settings from that driver to the new driver that you create. If you copy the template it will copy the default settings from the template to the new driver you create. For this example I'm just going to copy our template record we just worked with. When the screen first appears, we will see that some of the information is pre-filled based on what we have from our template record. Enter the name information and the gender. We must have an address for the driver to help us calculate certain things later on. To understand how to enter addresses, watch the video on entering addresses. A driver's address is never stored in the master address database. We can search for an existing address or we can find an address through PC Miler or Google. For this demonstration, I will quickly find an address. Enter the driver's email address and their telephone number. You must enter who recruited them and the date that they were hired. The remaining information in the recruiting information section can be left blank. It's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Most of the key settings area will be copied from the donor record, whether it's a template or one of the other drivers that you use to create this record. You can store this sensitive information, but only people with a proper authority can actually see this particular section. When you have all the information in the system that you need, you can either save this driver as out of service or as in service. In service means they are ready to work. Out of service means you cannot dispatch them until they've been brought in service. To edit an existing driver, go and click on the driver ID to drill into the driver profile. We will choose the driver we just created. The driver profile screen will look as follows. At the top, we'll have some menu options where we can find other information about the driver. We've got the driver's name and ID and seating status here, the address, their emails, as well as their phone numbers and language. On the right side, there can be hours of operation, all their compliance data, and any key settings about the driver, driver retention indicators, and the sensitive data. Only people with proper authority can see the sensitive data. To seat a driver in a truck, right beside vehicle ID, click on the seat driver. From here, you must choose a vehicle to seat the driver. It will identify if there's already drivers in the vehicle or not, and what position they're seated. We choose a vehicle, we then identify when the driver was seated in that vehicle, and what position they're seated at. By default, it will be the next position and we can attach any comment. Save the record. The driver now shows the vehicle they belong to. To remove them from the vehicle, drill in on the driver ID and unseat them based on a certain date and save the record. The seating locked setting determines how the driver and truck are treated, whether they are treated as one or as independent entities. This is for dispatching and for taking them in and out of service. If seating locked equals yes, they will be treated as one unit when taking them in and out of service or dispatching them. If the drivers work a set number of hours per day, per week, you can define the hours of operation just like you do for your customers and for your users. For more information on hours of operation, see the hours of operation training video. If compliance data is copied from the donor record, you must edit it to put in that driver's particular information. Here I will edit the driver's license and I will change the expiry date, put in the driver's license number and the driver's license class, 
the country of the driver's license, and the state of the driver's license, and save it. The right side of every compliance screen identifies the compliance name, where it applies, this case the driver, if it applies to any particular country or state province, whether it's shared within the network, and what to do on dispatch. In this case, if the driver is out of compliance, we ignore it. The options are ignore, warn, or prevent. See the compliance video documentation for more information on how to manage these values. For every compliance record, you can store files. In this case, I'll store their FMCSA files, and I'll upload that file to their driver system. Then I can view all their documents that are stored with their profile. The driver profile will have a summary of all compliance data right in the profile. If you want to see more compliance information, you go to the Compliances menu at the top, and you can add and modify and maintain the compliance for every driver profile from that compliance submenu. Key settings area identify whether the driver can cross the border if, if there's a particular company contact that talks to the driver all the time, their overall driver ranking, if they're still active on the payroll even though the driver profile may be retired, type of the driver, if there are service teams defining your company, the service team, and then the business unit and assigned location. The retention area identifies the last time the driver became available for work and number of hours, when they last had their last paying load, their current service status, whether they're in service or out of service, and the distance from home. This shows the dispatcher how far the driver is away from their home. Sensitive data can only be viewed and updated by people with the proper authority. Other parts of the driver profile can be found at the top menu system. Service history shows when the driver was in and out of service and if there is any future out of service planned. Appliances allows you to add and maintain compliance information about the driver. Employment history shows all the times you've hired and fired this driver. HOS stands for hours of service. In North America, the hours of service is recorded for the FMCSA legislative requirements. This driver is being tracked for hours of service using Big Road. The system will pull Big Road every 15 minutes and bring back their hours of service data. Please see the hours of service documentation for more information. Contacts is where you can store information about the driver's contacts. A contact can be their spouse, their parents, it can be an emergency contact, or it can be a passenger in the vehicle. It's up to you how you use this information about contacts associated with the drivers. The notes section is where you can keep unlimited number of notes of conversations you've had with the driver. Simply add a new note, put your note data in, whether it's associated with with any particular contact for the driver, and then if you need to have a follow-up date, put the follow-up date in and set the color. Save your note. You can keep unlimited notes about the driver. Any changes to the driver profile is logged. You can see all the changes by clicking on the logs. It will identify who did the change and what the change was, the old value and the new value. To terminate a driver, go to the Actions drop-down and click Terminate Employment. This will open up a screen where you must choose the termination date, who terminated the driver, the reason they were let go, would you rehire them, and any comment, and click Finish Termination Process. The information about their employment history will show in the Employment History tab. To rehire a driver, find the driver profile, go to the blue button at the top, and click Rehire Driver. Here you must identify who recruited the driver and the date the driver was hired. All the other information in this particular panel is optional. Then click Rehire Driver. The driver is now active again. Thank you for watching this video, adding and maintaining driver information.